Hello, guys. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. I'd like to start with a question. Who have used Express before? Nice. And uh, who have experienced with uh, well, maybe even better. So I may tell you tell you some new things. Okay. So Coop, I think, is the uh, next the next generation web framework for Node.js, and uh, and uh, let's see what is it about. Coop is uh, built by the same team that built Express, which I think is a good reference. Um, but what what actually makes uh, Coop different from the existing uh, web frameworks like Restify or Express? Coop uh, core is built on top of generators, and this makes it unique for now. Uh, generators is a new uh, feature in Atmosphere 6, which will be the next generation of JavaScript. And let's take a look how generators make our life easier. Uh, here, in this little silly example, you can see a generator function, which is unique and can be identified with the little asterisk in the name of the function. This is how a generator function looks like. And after we create an instance of our generator function, it will become a generator. And after that, the uh, next function will be exposed, uh, which will just return the next value of the generator function. And in this little example, you can see that each time we call next, it will go to the next yield, yield command, basically, and returns the value in this example one, two, and three. And uh, what it will return is basically a JavaScript, plain JavaScript object. And this, in this case, uh, the values will be one and two and three, but it's not written on the slide. And there is another property for this uh, return value, which is the done uh, property. And uh, as long as the generator can yield another value, it will, became, it will be false. And after the generator is exhausted, it will be done equals true. And this is how you can know that the generator function is exhausted. Let's see a little bit more complicated example of this. Here, we want to uh, get all the natural numbers. And for that, we basically created the infinite loop, y2. And uh, you all know that in a traditional program, it will be a huge problem. But as yield basically pauses the execution of the code, example, in this case, then you can call it as many times as you want. And it will just increment the internal and value and returns it. OK. And um, why is it helpful for, for a web framework like Core? It is really useful because using, using generators, you can ditch callbacks. And you can do this uh, uh, with the help of these yield things, which can basically help you uh, do the control flows in your, in your application. And uh, you know, all these years, we have been writing Node.js code with this traditional error-first callback style, which after every uh, callback which was called, we have to check if an error existed, and we have to deal with the return values. And we couldn't use try catch blocks, which is quite common in other languages. And using generators, you can you can use the traditional try catch, and it really makes more readable code. And in this case, uh, we just want to read a file called p, it's p because it will be too long otherwise. So we just uh, read a key file, and if an error happens, we deal with it. Yes, you shouldn't return it. It's just a dump example. And in the try catch, we basically use this your command to read the file, and as it will run, it will looks it will run synchronously, but it will run asynchronously as you used to it. But you can use a try catch to catch if an error happened. So with this, you can basically do control flows and CO is the is the core is in the core of core uh, which which makes it easy to use yield because you have to use generator function functions to able to use yield and uh, 
What CEO does is uh, grabs a function and decides that you can use yield as many times as you want. And uh, by using CEO and using yields inside it, you can uh, uh, create control flows in your application, which is quite similar to um, uh, async, for example, or promises, which you should use. And what can be used with CEO? Uh, with CEO, you can use promises, times, arrays, uh, and objects. And you can also use generators. And using, um, sorry, so you can use these things with CEO. But who knows what a tank is? Only one guy. Okay, so uh, how about, so um, then, so uh, times are basically uh, partial evaluated uh, functions, which means that the last uh, callback will be uh, passed as, a, as an extra parameter of the partially returned, partially evaluated function. And uh, instead of giving it as a, giving callback as a second parameter, like in this example, what you do is just after this tank, uh, partially evaluated, you pass the callback to it. And uh, you can use a uh, simply npm package for it called tankify. And with this tankify, it, you can easily convert the tra traditional error first callbacks to these tanks. And let's take an example uh, how it helps your life. Um, in this example, I use CO, Tankify, <coughs> and what I try to do is just read from a database, and uh, uh, I, will, I just want to read a file which I will get from the this database, the name of this stuff from the database. So, in a traditional callbacks, it will be just nested callbacks, but using CO, it will just uh, wait until the result from the DB gets back. It will be stored in the variable called f name, name. And when we have f name, it will just read this file from our file system. And we will just put the content of it on the console. Any questions so far? OK, then let's go to the next slide. The next slide, here I want to talk about uh, middlewares. Middlewares, in this concept, is quite similar as the ones in Express. Uh, and in middlewares, by using middlewares, we basically use the single uh, Unix pipeline concept, which means every middleware does one job, but that little job it does well. And after a middleware's execution is completed, the execution will continue the next middleware, and so on and so on. To understand this better, I put together a little example of how it works. Now let's take a look at this one. Can you read this? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Nobody moves. <laughs> so um, what we have here is this simple require our uh, already installed uh, NPM module called Core. And after that, we create middlewares. Uh, you can pass middlewares to Core using f.use. And every, uh, every function will be a generator function you will pass to Core. And in this case, in the first middleware, I want to add a header called response time, which uh, of course will be useful only if it's set after the result, after we know how much time it takes to complete this request. So for this, we just create a variable called star and we assign a new date for it. After that, the execution will call will next, which will be our middleware defined in the next f.use block. Here, we want to log each request. For that, we again create a new date for the start variable and calls it in call next. 
With this for a new max, we continue the execution in the next block, which will be basically our last middleware. Anyways, we try to call if there is a max among the next middleware, but there won't be any. And here we set the hello node DP uh, response to the body. After the execution, this this uh, process or this pipeline to our, to here, this point is called upstream. This will be the upstream of our request. And after we set the response body, uh, the execution will continue after the previous year block. So here we will have a different uh, data difference. We will log this request and the execution will continue here in the previous field, in the previous field and uh, we will just set the last response header on our request. This is how it looks like in Quark. Um, and let's take a look how it looked like in X plus. As you can see here, we have to define a lot of extra things um, and it's much more longer. In my opinion, it's much more readable and in the column. Was it the year how it all working together? Hopefully yes. Okay, let's get back to the slides. So this is one of the main Okay, so this is one of the great things in Quark. The other great thing is uh, superior error handling compared to, to the express one or the restifier one. And uh, why I'm saying this? I'm saying this because you can simply use try catch as I already mentioned before. And uh, by doing this, for example, in this middleware, we basically try to call the next middleware and if it doesn't succeed, we set the, our response to internet server error and we just push the error message back to the client. And of course, this can be simplified in Quark. You can just say this control and it will, it will do the same as the previous ones using response status and response body. <laughs> as you could already um, notice, uh, even when I said the response body in the previous examples, I didn't use any so-called roots that were in Express. Um, this is because uh, Koa was built in a modular approach in mind, which means that you only, basically you only have middlewares and uh, you don't even have a router, for example. But of course, one of the first packages published for Koa was that uh, it created a, a a Sinatra-like framework for co-op, which in this sense means that uh, you can use co-op the same as you use Express before. You can just say app.get, app.post, so basically just a, a helper for you. If this is something that you would like to try, uh, you can uh, already. It's available on the unstable branch of node 411. Um, which hopefully soon be stable. Uh, hopefully, uh, 12 version will be released during the summer. Yeah, we can hope that. Uh, <coughs> but we we already ran this unstable branch in production at SSP, and uh, and for us it was a huge success. Uh, there was no failures during uh, the testing. Phase, which uh, which was we basically had multiple a lot of uh, uh, little virtual machines that runs the stable version of Node, and we just uh, uh, switched one to use this unstable branch, and uh, we wanted to see what will happen if you use that. And uh, uh, for us, it showed that uh, using the unstable branch of Node, we serve more requests. The, the node with the unstable branch served more requests than the other ones using the stable version. And our response rate it, it dropped as well. So it's quite significant. And uh, one of the benefits was that uh, our 
infrastructure used less resource using the unstable natural model. Um, this, I hope this thing will just get you started using uh, Core. I want to encourage you all to try it out. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Questions? No questions? No, thank you.